And when I was a boy, I was taught that civilization was maybe 5,000 years old because that's about as far back as you find any evidence of great structures such as the pyramids in Egypt, uh, which most uh, conventional archeologists date to about 4,400 years, something like that, give or take a couple hundred years. Or the uh, ziggurats in Mesopotamia where the structures there might be, uh, you know, 5,000 years old max. And because we didn't find anything earlier, uh, it's assumed that we're pretty much a, a hunter-gatherer society or a fairly primitive society early, earlier. But recently, there's been a, a number of discoveries that uh, we'll talk a little bit about that really cause us to uh, question this paradigm that we've been given. And one of the people that have shed more light on this than anybody I know is an uh, individual by the name of Swami Sriyukeswar. And he wrote a book and called The Holy Science, uh, written in 1894, where he talked about this cycle. And he's the first one that I've ever known to actually give a reason for it. So we'll talk about that. So one of these sites that is changing our, our views of, of how old history is, is Gobekli Tepe, Turkey. And this was uh, really not known until about 10 years ago, and really only carbon dated uh, accurately to where a lot of people accepted it just in the last few years. And it's carbon dated to about 11,000 years ago, so 9,000 BC. So that roughly doubles the uh, period of time uh, in which man is uh, known to be able to make large structures. And these are pretty large structures. They are uh, uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 feet in height, and some of them weigh up to 20 tons. They would have all completely disappeared had they been left out, but for some reason they were purposely buried, and you can still see they've left some of the stones next to them uh, to help prop them up. The leaves that we find on them uh, just would have all gone away. And it turns out that these are symbols uh, that are common in mythological stories that have to do with the stars. And this is a, a boar, an aurochs. Uh, we see a, a bull like Taurus, a leo like lion, and uh, a scorpion here. So again, when I was a kid, even still in most textbooks, they teach that the zodiac is only about two or 3,000 years old, and you at least have to question that if we're seeing several of the zodiac symbols on a structure that uh, seems to be pointing towards the stars. These are, these are not just pillars used to prop up some roof. They're, for, they're some unknown type of structure with a very unique architecture. You know, primitive architecture, it's much easier to build squares or rectangles and things like this. This is something more than that. And I don't know what it's for, but I could kind of guess that, you know, it's a time when supposedly, uh, according to myth and folklore, mankind lived in tune with nature, and you would think you'd go there and maybe you could see how the, the stars were positioned when you were born uh, and hear stories about the different... Uh, stars and mythologies. So I, I talked to a friend about Gobekli Tepe, and he's a pretty good archaeologist, and he has a lot of trouble with the carbon dating. He knows that it's done by some well-accepted uh, scientists, but he says it just can't be that old. And I said, well, why not? And he said, because if we had the ability to build 20-ton structures, carve them, carry them 200 miles. You see this stone that's not available right around Gobekli Tepe. They had to uh, haul it quite a distance. Then we would have evolved that capability, and you would have seen civilization cities crop up much earlier. I said, OK. And then thought about it a little bit. And when I was in school, uh, my teacher 
uh, I had asked her, how come Columbus uh, only discovered America 500 years ago, 42? And uh, she said, well, they didn't have ships that were big enough. <laughs> and uh, just at that time, I was talking to her in the early 60s. This was being uncovered uh, just outside the Great Pyramid in the Giza Plateau. And this is the solar boat of Khufu. And they've since found uh, 14 ships, uh, not all right there at Giza, but some at Abydos, that were buried. Again, the only way they would have been preserved. And these, uh, this ship is twice the length of Columbus's largest ship. And it's more than twice the length of the Nina and the Pinta. And this ship is at least 4,400 years old. So not just a little older than Columbus, but almost nine times older than Columbus's ship. So you wonder why that didn't evolve. And again, we're taught that geared devices weren't developed until the great clockmaking era of uh, 12, 13, 1400 AD. And then this device was found. This is uh, the Antikythera device. I'm sure many of you have heard about it on the news. At first, they thought it was an anchor. Uh, it turns out it's 32 uh, precision gears. And it was found in the Aegean Sea uh, in a shipwreck that dates to 100 BC, give or take uh, a decade. And they know that because this item here is just corroded with coins and amphora, and, and it was definitely part of the shipwreck. And they even found uh, Greek writing uh, inside it. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, if we had geared devices almost 1,500 years before they were invented, then uh, why didn't these evolve? Why weren't these uh, leading to a renaissance? Likewise, Volta invented the battery in 1703. It was a rather crude battery. This one is actually a little more advanced. It was found in the ruins of Baghdad. It's at least uh, 2,000 years old, so it's almost a couple thousand years before the battery was invented. And this will hold twice the charge of Volta's first battery. Why wasn't this evolved? <coughs> Dentistry. If you had a toothache just a couple hundred years ago, you went to the local barber shop, they would give you some whiskey, and they would yank it out. That was dentistry. And then they found these skulls, just again, about 10 years ago, in Pakistan. Uh, 13 skulls, they date to 8,000 years old. Uh, well accepted dating. Uh, and somebody happened to notice that that looks a lot like uh, drilling there. And so they took it to modern dentists and they said, sure enough, that is a good job. They used some different size drills. They went to different depths. Uh, they did nice work because they didn't crack the outside enamel. And uh, the dentist couldn't believe the age of it. This on the left is a uh, modern anthropologist's view of how they might have carved these teeth. And uh, it's a piece of flint and a stick. But it really doesn't make sense. How do you get the speeds going fast enough with the bow? How do you be accurate enough? How do you actually fit it inside the mouth? 